I'll be showing six new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes a massively updated whiteboard app, some longtime top requested Teams features, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a dramatically improved and renovated whiteboard app in your Teams meetings. I'm gonna to go to the share tray here and choose Microsoft Whiteboard. This opens the brand new whiteboard, which is also based on Microsoft Fluid components. You can see there's a new user interface on the left-hand side. You still have the ink pens on the top. And for example, I can turn the ink pens off by clicking here, and I could hide this by just closing it. And if I click the pen again, the ink pens come back and click plus to open this pane. Now there's lots of options here. The one I wanna show first is probably the coolest one in my opinion, which is templates. If I click here, I have all these beautiful template options, brainstorming, problem solving, strategy, games, etc. So if I go to brainstorming, for example, I've got all these different options that are pre-created. So let's choose affinity diagram and then click. It creates this beautiful board, which I can use collaboratively with other people in the meeting. So anyone can go in and start filling out different parts of this. I can zoom in and zoom out by just scrolling the mouse wheel and holding down the control key. Let's look at a few others. Undo to remove it, hit the back button, a bunch of really cool options in here. Let's choose assumption grid, go here and click a whole new different design board that's a template. I encourage you to explore in here. There's even fun things like games, two truths, one lie. There's workshops, team alignment workshop, for example. This is the last one that I'll show. Again, it creates these beautiful setup whiteboard templates and you can just go in here and collaboratively have people fill these out. And I'll hit the back button again and we'll go back here. So you can choose your other options like you normally would, so notes, so here are my sticky notes. You know, I can go here and click on different notes on the board. There are also note grids. This is new. If I click on note grids and then here and click, I get a grid of notes. I can zoom in like this. Lots of options for putting little note grids and brainstorming. So go over here, click again, and I'll hit the back button. Text is similar as before. We have shapes like before, so it's really easy to click and drag little shapes out onto the board and change the colors. We also have a new option, which is reactions. This is really cool, a new one. If I click reactions, now you can have people put their reactions onto the board. So something they like, maybe I have a thumbs up, you know, I like this one and I like this one over here. Maybe if I don't like something, I hit the X. So you can have people put their little thumbs up and other reactions onto the board or whatever else that you're presenting or showing. So this gives a lot of options when you're trying to calculate how many things people like or they're voting on. And these reactions are really handy to be able to use with your whiteboard. The last new feature in whiteboard I'll show is in the upper right, if I click here, you're gonna see an option to format the background. So I'll click here and now I can choose different backgrounds. So a lot of options to make your digital canvas look a little bit different paper wise or design wise. Also, I can choose colors. So here's a grid, here's dark, here's green, here's yellow, and this is graph paper. Maybe I want ruled paper or maybe I want diamonds. And we'll close that. So this new whiteboard is fully rolled out now and there's gonna be even more improvements coming in the near future, so stay tuned for those. The second new feature is one of the top most requested Teams features and that is reply to a specific message in chat. So I've got a big chat here going and there's a message back here and I wanna actually give context to that message when I'm replying a couple of months later. So I'm gonna click the three dot menu here, drop it down and choose reply. What you'll see here is it actually quotes this message, kind of like a quote tweet. And now I can respond like this and I'll click send to send the message and it sends it out with that context of the original message. And you can do this on any message. So I can go up here, hover and hit the three dot menu like this and just choose reply. The third new feature is another top request and that is the ability to pre-create breakout rooms. So I've sent out a breakout rooms meeting to a set of people here and I'm the organizer. I'm gonna click it and then choose edit. What you'll see is there's a breakout rooms tab right here and I'm gonna click this. Here's the new create breakout rooms pre-meeting experience. So I'm the organizer and I'm gonna click create rooms and I'm gonna say I need four rooms and we'll click add rooms. Now here are the four rooms ready to add people to. Now I can assign participants here and I can choose automatically or manually. I'll pick automatic and go next, assigning participants. Now you can see all these rooms have participants assigned. I can go to the three dot menu and I'll choose edit to rename the rooms. Save and I'll name the other ones. Now I've named my four rooms. If I have other participants, I can go up here 
and I can easily change the rooms that they're in. So maybe I wanna have Alex join the green room instead and hit assign. Now I look in here and I see that has four participants and Alex is now in that green room. So now I can join the meeting up here and join. If I click on the breakout rooms icon here and it opens up the pane, you'll see all of the people are assigned to these four different rooms. I can still assign new people and I have all the other options for breakout rooms that I normally would. The fourth new feature is another top requested breakout room enhancement and that is the ability for the organizer to have different presenters so they can manage these breakout rooms. Now, once I am a breakout room presenter, the rights that I have are assign users to rooms, add or delete rooms, open and close rooms, send announcements, recreate rooms, timers, join other rooms. So that person basically has the same rights as me. Especially in education, this is really handy because if you're a teacher, you might wanna have other people who are helping manage those breakout rooms or in the corporate environment, this is really handy as well. There's a link in the description that has even more details on how breakout room presenters work. So if I have my breakout rooms pane open here as the organizer, I'll go to settings gear here and you'll see assign presenter to manage rooms. We'll switch this on and I'm gonna search for presenter. So we'll put in Alex, he's a presenter I want and then Ella, click her. I'll add another couple. So I have four presenters added, one for each room that I'm planning on. Now I'll go back here. Just a note, anyone in your meeting can be added as a presenter to help you co-manage. So it's not like you have to pick one person from each room. Maybe you have external people who are going to be co-facilitating the meeting. As long as you add them to the meeting and give them presenter rights, they'll be able to go into any room or do everything that you need to do in a breakout room. The fifth new feature is custom images for your background in the web. So I'm gonna turn on my video here. Hey, and now I'll enable right here the video switch. On the right hand side, I'm gonna choose my background. There's a nice one for education. And now I'm in the classroom. I'm gonna join the meeting. Now I'm full screen. If I wanna change this, hit the three dot menu, show background effects, and let's choose a different one. Minecraft, hit apply. I'm in Minecraft world. The sixth new feature is a two for one, supervised chats and delete chats. These have been top requests in education. The first one, supervised chats in Teams. This means that students will not be able to chat together unless there is a supervisor, in this case an educator, present in that chat. This is an IT admin setting and it can be set up so that only students can chat if an educator is in that chat with them. Many schools don't want students to be chatting by themselves, bullying can occur, so this is how the IT admin can enable the supervised chat. The link is in the description. And related, we just came out with the ability for an IT admin to allow teachers to delete specific chats. So if there's some inappropriate chats happening, the teacher can go in and delete that chat. These are both rolled out now and the links are in the description. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.